This tutorial is all about the properties of plastics and how this makes them more suitable for particular uses. Here we see some UPVC guttering. That's made of a plastic, but why is this particular plastic chosen? Well, it's quite rigid. It's certainly waterproof and doesn't react with water. It can also easily be moulded into shape. You may know that this particular plastic can also be coloured, so you could have brown guttering, or black guttering, or white guttering, or indeed green guttering for your house. You need to be able to interpret some simple information, usually in tables, about properties of polymers and also of their uses, and be able to justify or evaluate why one plastic may be more suitable than another for a particular use. It's important in these kind of questions not to just repeat every bit of information you're given in the table, to, but to be able to pick and choose those bits which are most suitable, and also perhaps to say why a, another plastic is unsuitable for that particular use. This question's about polymers. A polymer called PET has got these properties. A low density, a low melting point, it won't shatter when it's dropped, it resists attack by water and acids, and it's flexible. Now, which use is PET most suited for? Now, when we look at the list, a cup for hot drinks. Well, this would be unsuitable because it tells us that PET has got a low melting point, so that one must be wrong. Making a CD. Well, we expect our CDs to be rigid, and it tells us this plastic is flexible, so that's no use. Fizzy pop bottles seems to be suitable. Let's just check the paperweight. Paperweight, we'd expect them to be heavy, but we're told that PET has got a low density. So certainly the correct answer is fizzy pop bottles. Write down a reason for your answer. Well, for a fizzy pop bottle, we want something that it will not shatter when it's dropped. And also, because fizzy drinks contain fruit acids, we want it to be resistant to attack by water and acid. Here's the Mark scheme, and you can see that the fizzy pop bottles were certainly the correct choice. They would also accept the low density, but any other properties you put which are on the list, they will simply ignore them. You will not be marked wrong or lose any mark unless you write low melting point or flexible, in which case you may lose a second mark. Therefore, it doesn't pay to write down everything from the table. Phil has bought a new greenhouse. Look at the greenhouse. The windows are made from plastic rather than glass. One of the properties that makes this plastic suitable for making windows is that it is transparent. Suggest so two other properties of this plastic that make it suitable for making windows in a greenhouse. I would think one advantage of plastic over glass is that it will not shatter. And secondly, whatever the windows of this greenhouse are made from, it mustn't react with water. From the mark scheme, you can see that there were lots and lots of different properties that were accepted. It's worth having a look through at the kind of words that are used on the mark scheme and to try and use some of these words in your answers. PVC is a polymer used to cover copper when electrical wires are made. One property of PVC which makes it useful for covering electrical wires is that it lasts a long time. Write about other properties of PVC which make it useful for covering electrical wires. It is flexible, so it won't crack. When the wire is bent, 
Secondly, doesn't conduct electricity. So no electricity can escape through it. There's lots of other possibilities here. The idea that it's easy to mould or colour so that you can give different colours to different wires in the bundle. The idea of it being waterproof or insoluble in water, so not affected by water, and also the idea it's non-toxic. Next we look at the problem of disposing of plastics, uh, why they don't degrade and why that's a problem. One problem of plastics is that they are not biodegradable, that means that they're not broken down by the action of sunlight or water or microorganisms. So as these plastic objects here have been thrown out of boats or ships, they've simply remained in the sea until they've been washed up on the shore to make this kind of mess. That's the problem with plastics, they are so stable they don't break down for many hundreds or thousands of years. One way of dealing with plastics is to throw it in the bin and then the local authority will take it to a landfill site. Plastics like polythene are so unreactive they take hundreds of years to break down and therefore they take up a lot of valuable land in landfill sites. An option that some cities use, including Nottingham, is to burn a lot of waste. That's great because it reduces the volume or bulk of the rubbish and that means it takes up less landfill area. Also, it provides heat energy that the city can then sell on to businesses and homes for heating. However, it's bad because it's a waste of the raw materials that went into making those plastics and also can make poisonous gases and carbon dioxide that increases global warming. Recycling plastics is the best option. These plastic bottles made of PET are collected and bundled, broken down into nodules of the plastic and then these are melted and reformed into useful materials like camping gear and fleeces. It's great because it saves raw material. That haversack doesn't need to be made out of new material from oil but is made out of recycled material. But it's difficult to separate one plastic from other plastics at the recycling centre this takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So because plastics are difficult to deal with, chemists have developed new types of plastic which will get around the problem of plastics sticking around for a long time. The problem illustrated here is that a lot of the rubbish that's been dumped in this area is plastic packaging, plastic bags, carrier bags from supermarkets and from clothes shops and so on. Because it's non-biodegradable, it sticks around for hundreds or thousands of years. One way around this is to use biodegradable bags. These bags have got just the same properties as ordinary carrier bags, except that once they've been used and they're dumped in landfill, they will corrode, degrade away within a matter of two or three years. Biodegradable plastics are also used by the horticultural industry. Should you buy, for example, a small tree or plant, it might be wrapped in a special kind of plastic. You plant it in the ground, but the plastic will simply dissolve away and you don't have to remove that plastic away from the bottom of the plant. These four pictures here illustrate problems which happen in everyday life which have been solved by a different kind of plastic. If we have a dog and we take it for a walk and it does its business in the road, we have to clear that up and put it into a plastic bag. But what then to do with the plastic bag? Usually it just ends up in the rubbish with the rest of the landfill. On the right we have the soiled linen from the hospital. Unpleasant enough to take it off the bed and put it in the wash, but also unpleasant for the person in the laundry who has to empty those laundry bags and put them into the washing machine. 
Bottom left we have dishwasher tablets, which as we can see are irritants and shouldn't be touched. How on earth do we get them into the dishwasher? And on the right, the personal liquid, which has to be poured into the washing machine, all too easy to add too much. These are four solutions, all made from soluble plastic. The flushable doggy do bags can just be put down the toilet and can be flushed away. On the right we have laundry bags which are soluble, therefore don't have to be emptied. The whole bag can be put into the washing machine and the bag will dissolve. We have the dishwasher tablet which is wrapped in a special kind of soluble plastic. Just needs to be put in and it stops our hands coming into contact with the detergent. And at the bottom right we have the Persil little capsules with just the right amount of Persil liquid in. And of course the capsule is made of soluble plastic which will dissolve in the washing machine. Here's a past exam question. Getting rid of waste polystyrene is very difficult. Most councils will not recycle polystyrene, so it goes into our rubbish bins. Write about the problems of disposing of waste polystyrene, including your answer, the ways of getting rid of polystyrene and the problems of waste polystyrene. Well, one of the problems of waste of polystyrene is litter. Because it doesn't biodegrade. It could be burnt, but this may make poisonous gases and CO2 which can cause global warming. If put in landfill, it takes up valuable space. And here's the answer. You can make any three of those points on the answer scheme. It says that using landfill sites takes up a lot of space. That's two marks. Non-biodegradable, that's another mark, so I've covered that already now. It causes litter, the idea of choking animals. It's difficult to sort out, although it did say that uh, you, you weren't able to recycle it to the council. And the idea of burning or incineration uh, can cause toxic gases and carbon dioxide forming global warming. So covered most of the points in the answer, but it would be a maximum of three marks.